Okay, so now let's uh, talk about the pseudocode for the Romberg algorithm. Okay. Um, and, and this code is set up to um, fill in this Romberg matrix row by row uh, instead of column by column. And part of the reason for this is because, if you recall, uh, the main part of, or the main cost, if you will, of the, um, the Romberg algorithm is in the function evaluations, which is in computing that first column. Okay? So there is a reason, for example, to do it row by row because basically what that allows you to do is to see, uh, to compute, it's like what the sort of diagonal entries, it's like in the Romberg uh, method is, using just as much enough just as many function evaluations as you need to compute that diagonal entry. And then you can decide, it's like on the basis of that function value or that approximation of the integral, whether you want to do more function evaluations, for example, to get a higher, uh, more accurate uh, sort of integral, right? Um, so, um, so again, let me just sort of briefly remind you. Um, so I'm going to sort of re-index things a little bit here. Um, so it's going to be R0, 0, 0, all the way up to Rm. M, and then this, sorry, M, 0. And then this is going to R, M, M. Okay. Um, and, and so you might ask, well, how could one uh, figure out that you, you're getting a, a good enough answer if you don't actually know what the exact integral is? And as I said, it's like uh, if you do this uh, algorithm row by row, then you will have this sequence of diagonal entries, right? Um, which are, and, and the diagonal entries are accurate to the big O of two, sorry, big O of H to the M plus one, right? H to the two M. Um, plus one. Okay, so, so what could happen, for example, is that you could compare uh, the um, approximation, it's like for subsequent entries um, on, along the diagonal, and if you find that you know, the change is very minimal, then you might have reason to believe that you've gotten a good enough answer and then just stop the process. Okay, so, so in any case, it's like uh, that's sort of the setup, uh, and this is a little bit different from uh, how we had described it. It's like in the previous lecture, uh, just from the indexing, uh, but the basic idea remains. Okay, so your input is as follows, right? You're given the limits of the integration, A and B, and you're given M, which is how many terms you want to compute, okay? And then H is equal to uh, B minus A, and then R0, 0, right? R0, 0, as you recall, is just a trapezoidal rule applied to this formula, uh, to, to this function, so this is equal to one-half, uh, B minus A times, well, you already have H is equal to B minus A, so let's just say one half of H times uh, F evaluated at A plus F evaluated at B. Okay, and then uh, for N equals to one to M, you do the following, all right? So H becomes H over two, okay? And then uh, R, uh, N zero is equal to, uh, okay, so I first have to uh, update the first entry in the new row, right, which is, which involves calculating the composite trapezoidal rule. Uh, and if you recall, it's like that involves using the value of the composite trapezoidal rule from the previous row, right, plus uh, some appropriate uh, weighted combination of the function values at the new points which I've introduced. Okay, so it's given like follows. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, and then now I fill in the rest of the row. Okay, so this is for m is equal to one to n. We do the following. So this is the extrapolation part, right? The Richardson extrapolation part. R and M is equal to R 
n m minus 1 plus this correction factor, which is r n m minus 1 minus r n minus 1 m minus 1 divided by this scaling factor, which is 4 to the m minus 1. Okay, and then we end the, the do statement. Wait. Okay. And then you end do again. And then you output uh, the whole uh, matrix. Or sort of, you know, lower triangular matrix, basically. Okay, so that's the, the algorithm. It's uh, relatively straightforward. Um, and um, so you typically only use this as like for relatively moderate uh, values of m because it takes uh, 2 to the m plus 1 function evaluations. So this takes 2 to the m plus 1 function evaluations. Right, so it gets quite expensive quite fast as m, inc m increases, right? But again, the advantage is that the, um, the certainly the last entry uh, in this matrix, it's like has this very, very high rate of uh, sort of convergence, right? And um, so again, in practice, um, you know, it's like you, you might um, apply this with some sort of adaptivity in mind, Right, so instead of uh, doing this for a fixed m, you sort of keep doing this algorithm until um, you know maybe the difference between uh, the newest diagonal entry you, you computed and the next to newest diagonal entry you computed that difference is below some sort of threshold value, um, which is sort of suggesting that any corrections you're adding, it's like beyond that, are small enough that maybe you don't care about it, uh, and that gives you some sort of termination criteria, right? So you can. So you can use this uh, sort of algorithm adaptively. With some sort of termination condition. So you can sort of essentially check the error, and if the error it's like uh, which is estimated, it's like again say for example by the difference between two uh, sort of adjacent entries in this diagonal of the Romberg matrix. If that error maybe is small enough, it's like maybe you would stop the calculation, uh, you know, instead of adding yet another row. Okay, so so that's the basic algorithm in pseudocode. It's uh, and it's relatively easy to implement. Um, yeah, so let me just stop there.